All right, folks, this is, this is part three of foundation puppy training with Mike O'Donnell and shaping the behavior of your puppy so the future training goes much easier. Today, Mike is gonna be working primarily on the ground. That's, that's leash training, lead training, and showing you how to control that puppy on the ground. Enjoy. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food providing performance diets for the canine athlete and brought to you in part by RST, manufacturers of short chamber low pressure shot shells, Mud River Dog Products, fundamentally changing the expectations of the hunter and dog enthusiast, Pete Shoe Dryer, inventor of the footwear dryer, takes on the nuisance of foot odor, Thorough Good, job fitted footwear, handcrafted in America since 1892. Visit thoroughgoodusa.com for a dealer near you. Merkel Shotguns, made with pure passion and reliable craftsmanship that never fades. All right, so we're, we're, back, we're with Buck here on the ground. We're going to the ground. Um, you know, early on I showed you something I call the drag line that we put on a, our, our little puppies. This is, this is suitable for like an eight week, nine week old puppy, still a small guy. Uh, you know, nine week old puppy isn't gonna go hunting the country for us yet, typically. So we have that on our puppy, we let him just wander around. And as the dog is wandering around, what I wanna do with a puppy, well, let me get him out from under the table here. Come on, pup. Now, you, I'm gonna show you something in a little bit, but so I've got my little puppy, he's wandering around. I don't even have the check cord, but as my puppy wander by, wanders by me, I just step on the cord. And he hasn't hit the end of the cord yet. He's, he's, got, he's got enough behind him where, enough training behind him where he's, no, nope, maybe he's gonna turn into the wild man I want right now. What I'm looking to do is let the, the puppy get to the end of this cord. And I may have to go right to a shorter one for him. But we're just gonna step on the cord. And so at first, when a puppy hits the end of that cord, they're gonna do one of a few different things. They're gonna fight it. They're gonna just pull against it, pull against it, pull against it backwards. So I wanna make sure my collar is on enough where it can't slip over his head. The puppy may have a meltdown, you know, just go into this panic mode and just start screaming and twisting and flailing on the ground. I don't care. What I'm looking for is for my puppy to give up on the pressure, to not keep pulling, pulling, pulling. So the minute the puppy has the cord slack, I, let it, I just step off it and I just start moving around again. So let me just, he's a pup, I step on it. He got a little, he gave himself a correction there when he, when he had it in his mouth and he went running, he gave himself a little, little correction and now he's saying, okay, I guess I better behave. He's already had some leash work so he understands. What this pup is showing you right now is he knows how to turn off pressure. He got that correction from pulling and now as I move, what's he doing? He's staying in proximity to me because he knows as long as he does, there's not going to be any pressure. He's not going to get, he's not going to get pulled. This is leash manners. So here's a four and a half month old puppy that is starting to get leash manners. I, I, I see dogs come to our knob, the training days. We all gather here, people come walking up the driveway and that dog is just towing them. They're just holding on for dear life. When our clients bring their dogs in for training, they, they, they're trying to get the dog out of the car and it tows them. Um, you know, going back to the crate training I talk about, one of the funniest things for me to watch is somebody trying to open the door of their car while preventing a dog from flying out the, the crack in the door because they haven't taught the dog to just wait and, and be patient. There's no need for that. Teach the manners and, and just go about it. So let's see if we can free him up a little bit again. I may have to go get Renegade Dakota back out to try it. So he's just a little tangled up. We'll get him undone. But your little puppy, that hasn't had this enough leash work is just gonna wander and wander and wander. And you just stop. You're not talking to him. He has, if he has a little meltdown while the cord's on the ground, you ignore it. And you stay on that cord until he stops. So if he's gonna chew the cord, I'm not letting go. When he's like this, a boy. Come on, pup. And we move on. So, that's, so here he goes, he's gonna wander around. He's gonna play with the cord. So you can take your puppy for a walk. Let him drag that little short cord. And then when he comes by you every now and then, just step on the cord. 
You know, so I'm white right there. As he went spinning, if he got his legs all tangled up, I've got to fix that for sure. But you see that he's not pulling against it. He knows he's towards the end of that court. Now there's some pull, but he didn't go into a meltdown. He gave to it. He got that, he got that self-correction there. And now I've got this dog saying, okay, I'm, I'm all right. I'm cool. I'm just going to hang with you. Good boy. Good boy. The start of leash manners. There's no reason for our dogs to be dragging us around. I, there's no reason for these, these silly harnesses and stuff that we sell or that they sell for that to try and stop a dog from pulling. Teach your dog not to do it. Very, very simple. Teach your dog not to do it. So now we can start teaching. Once our dog is so good at that, I could just start teaching some general leash manners, which one option is with this setup, a flat collar. It's probably, you're gonna, this takes more correction than anything. My leash is just hooked to his flat collar. But as I walk, I just, I'm, ask, I'm not pulling him to me. I'm cueing him to come with me. So rather than me, I want to go this way. So rather than me pull the dog along, I want to go this way. I pop until he comes with me. I'm letting him fix the issue. The issue is you're getting cropped, you're getting popped. The fix is follow the direction of the pop. Go with the pressure. Let me get him untangled. I'm not going to panic here. He's, he's, he's going to have to settle down just like that. You saw him start to go, woo, 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 get all a little nervous. If right away I panicked and I said, oh, 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 wait a minute, let me fix that. I'm just feeding into it. I'm just feeding it. He had to fix it. He fixed that problem beautifully. He just settled down. I want to go this way. Pressure goes this way. I want to go this way, pop, 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 pressure. Goes this way, just come with the pressure. He wants to get behind me, fine. I'm not asking him. The only thing I'm not gonna do is let him jump on me. I'm just gonna sweep him off. But I want to go this way, here's the pressure. I want to go this way, here's the pressure. That's giving in to pressure. That's the beginning to, to have, being able to handle our dog in the field. Hey, come on along with me. If, I have, if I'm e-collar training, eventually I give a little tap on the e-collar. The dog comes right along with me. My retrieve training, where I'm trying to make the dog go out. I'm teaching the dog to go out by giving into that pressure. Go away. He wants to go that way. I'm not going to tow him. I'm going to say, come on. Boom. So when I first start out, I don't say heel as I'm first starting to teach a dog to walk with me. It's just with me. With me. Excuse my sniffles. With me. That's the precursor because he's going to make a lot of mistakes. I don't want to be saying heel, heel, heel and have him make all these mistakes and then expect him to have this polished heel down the road. So it's just strictly hit with me. He's behind me. Sure, that's fine. He started to pull. I was just going to give a pop in that direction. That's all. The only thing I'll fix at this point is a dog who tries to get in front of me and, and impede my movement. So if he was trying to impede my movement, I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to move through him. I'm not going to kick him. I'm just going to push my way through him, keeping my feet low to the ground. And that's teaching him, you can't, you can't claim this space in front of me. Good boy. Now, what else can I do while I'm in this position? I can start working on my recall. I've got the pup on, I've got the, pup on the cord. I, can, I have a pocket of treats. Pup, pup, pup. Hey, here. So he now he says, oh, you got a treat. Well, I can start shaping my recall right from the very beginning. If I want my recall to be my dog coming to my side, I start out just like this. I turned my back so it was easy for the dog to come into my side. So if I, want, if I start doing it this way, see, there's the treat. And now I got to do a lot of work to try and get him to turn around. I won't give him the treat until he's there. Boom. All right, good boy. But if I, if I get in motion, so he got ahead of me, whoop, I can deny it. Here, good kid. But even at a distance, here, boom, good boy. I'm teaching recall to a little puppy. Why wait until they're a year old to try and get a gosh darn recall out of the dog? Take advantage of this. This is, this is such a golden opportunity for learning these young puppies. Their minds are so open to this stuff. They learn without even thinking about it, without even realizing it. We're just shaping a behavior. That's all we're doing. Here, so there's a little pop. 
because he wasn't paying attention, I gave just like a down the road. My older dog, I say here, and she doesn't turn to come, a, a tap of the e-collar. And that's exactly what I want, is that quick turn to come in. Good, good pup, good pup. So if you're gonna use a lot of treats, just back off on your food a little bit or else you'll end up with a giant fat puppy. So she's coming up on me or he's coming up, nope. He's in front of me, let me turn my back here. Good, very good, very good. With me, good pup. So you can see I don't need all this cord with this pup at this point. I can go to a shorter cord. If I have, you know, some dogs are such renegades, they're way out. I can try and let him go out on the cord. I don't think he's gonna leave me now because we've done enough repetitions. He wants to stay close to the treats. But let me see if I can get him to drift away. When I'm doing recall with a lead, you've gotta make sure that you're ready to give that cue the moment you give the command. So you can't have a lot of slack lead laying between you and the dog. I can have all this lead, but I want to have here. <laughs> yeah, you're too smart. Good boy, good boy. And it's just, yeah, it gets sloppy. You're trying to manage all the lead. But there's, yeah, there we're, we're working on recall with this little guy. Simple as that. So let's, leave, let's bring Dakota out, do a quick pop with him, see how he is recall-wise, and then uh, we'll just go off after that. All right, so I've got Dakota here. Let's see what happens with Dakota, leash-wise and recall. He's smelling something on the ground, or I think Buck had, had relieved himself there. Boom, so there it is. I'm gonna step on the cord. He's gonna try and play with the cord. I'm just gonna get it. This guy is such a cord player. We've gotta keep it away from him. So I'm still gonna give him that pop, even though he's got it in his mouth. I know some of you may be concerned about his teeth and all. I'm not pulling hard, hard, hard. But if it, in short fashion, he'll learn that it just isn't so much fun anymore. His, he, may have this, he may have this tendency naturally, or his owner may be playing tug with him, giving him objects to tug and play with. I know he has another dog at home, so the two dogs may be playing keep away and grab at objects, and that's where we get this kind of behavior. Here. While we're right in this point, I don't like teaching young dogs sit, pointing dogs. We get dogs into the kennel for woe training, more advanced woe training, and they've had a lot of sit work, and every time you put pressure on them, they sit, and that makes it very hard to do your woe training. When I'm gonna give my dog a treat, he has to have four feet up like that. He has to be standing. If he were to sit, I would just move the treat forward to get his butt to come off the ground and give him the treat while he was up on four feet. Here, boom, good boy, that a boy. So you can see once we start doing this type of stuff, we get a dog that's pretty good hanging around with us on the leash. But there's a little pop. Come to me, come, come with the direction of the pop. Good. I could do the same thing with, with the wonder lead. I'm just gonna switch him over quick. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask him to come off the table you can see how fired up he is for treats. So you gotta be careful. You can make a dog so crazed with those treats. He's, he's smelling them on my hand. He's trying to lick my fingers. And so it's making it hard for him to focus on anything else. But now I've got him on the Wonder Lead. I don't have it totally tight. I've just got it close where it's not gonna slip off his head easy. But boom, I just cue, cue. These, both these guys started to learn to walk. I actually did, did the wonder lead with them because it's so much easier uh, putting on and off with the dog. So I just take them out of the kennel and they, they do that. And I just, I'm not towing them. I pop, pop, pop until he gives into the pop. And they learn that when you feel that pressure, just give into it. So here's pressure. He wants that, he wants that. So I've got to be more assertive. Pop, 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 pop. Good, good. So sometimes it takes that repeated, repeated, repeated because he's so in tune with something, but I'm just gonna ask him to come to me. So I'm not gonna talk, I could just pull him to me right now, but he's finally seen the camera and he wants to say, what's going on here? So gentle, gentle, good boy. Very good, very good. Again, this is building on future training needs. Future training needs are good solid recall. 
responding to collar pressure, responding to just even leash pressure all the time. And this is what it's building on without him even really having a hard time with it. If you see, you know, neither of these puppies are stressing out. There's not resentment, I guess some people would call it, anything like that. He's just being a silly old puppy, but he's learning things. And that's what it takes. So you can do this every day with your dog. This doesn't, you know, you take the puppy out to go to the bathroom. You can do some walking with me before you let the dog go and do their business. You can have them on that long lead. Make them come with you. Let's go, let's go. So he's trying to get in front. I'm gonna pop him away. Come on, good. But then you get to your area, let him have all the line. Go ahead, hurry up, do your business, do your business. Hurry up, he's all done. Let's go, good. Cross that cord. Let's go. So I'm going to try and stop him from getting it. He's going to wind me up. Let's go. I'm just pulling. Nope. So that's more forceful. This is a great example of just a very exuberant puppy. I hope you've seen that. I, I haven't gotten angry. I haven't like escalated on the dog. Yeah, I've had to use a little stronger pop here and there, but I'm not even talking to the dog. If I weren't filming this right now, I'd be saying very little. There'd be a lot of good boys when he did the right thing. Atta boy. So well, I want to get him to respond. He's not, he's not, he's fascinated by the leaf. Good boy. He didn't come right to me. I didn't ask him for a recall right now. I asked him to respond to this pressure. I'm going to step away from him and ask him to respond with me. Good boy. And then we can go back to doing some recall. Coda. Hey, here. Good. Good boy. And then I'll get his focus all back with the treats. So as I'm progressing with my recall, I was, I was hoping he was going to stay looking away so I could give the here command. And if he didn't respond, I could give him the little cue to go ahead and turn and come in. So here we go. Here. He's very distracted. Here. There we go. Good. So I taught him to respond to pressure on recall. Very basically, it's just the beginnings, but that's what it's about. Right now, he's going to stay with me. But if I can get him to be focused away for a second. Here. Boom. Yeah, that up, boy. Good. So that's, that's the stuff you can work on every day. Have them on the lead. Teach them not to fight on the lead. Start working on your recall, whether you want the flat collar or something like this with the wonder lead. It's just, it's just go with that. Um, so let me just rig him up for a second with the prong collar because I talked about that and I want to be sure to show it so that people maybe can get over their, their inhibitions about it. Um, and, and we'll just show him again quick with that prong collar. So the prong collar is just, it's, a, it's another training device. I want to have it up nice and high on the head like I would my e-collar, like I do that wonder lead, but it's, it slips. So as, as he pulls, it tightens up a little bit. Again, I'm pushing on these things hard. They're not sharp. They're not going to puncture my skin. It's just a bunch of points of contact. I want you to realize if, if we look at his throat, this is actually easier on the trachea than a choke chain or even a, a, a slip type device. When we have a slip device, we can constrict the whole trachea. This is points along that. So there's a lot of space between these points that there's no contact, no pressure on the, the dog's muscles there, anything like that. But the, the beauty is, is that these points really connect with the dog. They really understand them. So I'm going to go back to the ground with him. We're just going to walk off the table. He's so fascinated here. And then... I want you to try and, and see how little pressure it takes for me. That's actually down his neck further than I'd want it. I would adjust it to a, bit, a little smaller. I mean, you saw me working the dog already on a flat collar. You saw me working him with the Wonder Lead. I guess I'd ask you to look to see if you see any different in the dog's expression. Like, is he in pain? Is this causing him anything different? You know, any kind of pain that you didn't, that, that wasn't there with the others. I've got the same dog is what I see. And I just want to get, bring this back up high, get that away from his mouth. But 
very, very gentle. It takes so, I call this power steering. This is, this is basically power steering for dogs. You, you get the appropriately sized one and it's just that little, little cue. Come on with me, buddy. Come on with me. This is really good for an older dog that hasn't learned manners and now you're trying to teach manners to a dog that just pulls and pulls and pulls. You go to a little bit larger size with a dog and they learn it very quick. Again, I'm just gonna cue him. I didn't make him move his feet. He moved his feet. I'm giving him that nudge enough so he knows I'm nudging him, but I didn't pull him off his feet so he had to start moving my way. I'm just gonna ask him to come with me. That, that's, again, it's just another tool. He's playing with that, but I'm still gonna get him to come along. So there, even though he hit that hard, you didn't hear him scream, he didn't cry out, it's not painful. Again, so please, please understand that this is a, a, a humane tool. It's a great training device. Use it if it's something that's right for you or in the appropriate situation. Well, Mike, that was some, some great stuff. You know, I learned a lot and I know our viewers will enjoy that very much. Now, uh, Mike, you train, train dogs all the way from a puppy to, to finishing them, uh, breaking their everything, right? Yes, correct. You do. Yeah. And so I think that's a great resource for our viewers. Uh, I'm gonna put a telephone number here on how to contact you. And uh, I'm sure we'll have folks that'll wanna come and get some help. All right, great. Okay. Always, always looking to help, always love helping people out. Wonderful. Mike, thanks so much. Thank you, Paul. You bet. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that episode. That's the end of the three-part series, Foundation Puppy Training with Mike O'Donnell. I hope you've, you've watched all three parts because it's very important that you shape the behavior of your puppy for future training. Thanks for joining us. I've put his number on several times in the, these three-part series. If you have an issue, you need some help, give Mike a call. Hope to meet you in the field someday. Bird Dogs Afield, presented by Native Performance Dog Food and brought to you in part by RST Shot Shells, Mud River Dog Products, Peach Shoe Dryer, Thoroughgood Footwear, and Merkel Shotguns. <laughs>